Now let's get into some tips on raising healthier, more nutrient dense chickens. So they're getting more nutrition, that's going into their eggs, that's going into their meat, and they're gonna also resist pest and disease a lot better. So right behind me, they're all free ranging. This is the main area that I have been throwing all of their feed during this winter. And behind me here, I've got figs, blueberries, pomegranates, pawpaws, bananas, all sorts of plants back here, elderberries, goji berries. What they're doing is fertilizing this whole area for me so that this spring, it's gonna explode with life and I'm gonna get a lot better growth from my plants for free. And they're also getting a lot more nutrition here. Free ranging, if you're able to let your chickens do it, allows the intelligence of the bird, knowing what nutrition they're lacking, they will go out and seek that and get it into their body. And not only that, the biggest difference in your yolk color is gonna come by them free ranging or you adding supplements into their diet. And yolk color a lot of times is influenced by specific nutrients like carotenoids, things with a lot of red color in them like uh, tomatoes or carrots. These things can really cause the yolk color to go even more orange. But the color of the yolk doesn't necessarily mean that it always has more nutrition in it because sometimes my chickens will have a little bit more yellow yolk, not pale and disgusting like the store, but sometimes it's more orange, sometimes it's more golden yellow and it just changes based upon the different nutrients that they're getting out here in the wild. Now, I'm letting my chickens come out here and just go wherever they want on acres and acres of land. That may not be possible. You got a bad neighbor's dog or coyotes or some other animals, hawks. You know, if you've got that situation, then I'd recommend running them in electric poultry netting and use a chicken tractor style coop for them, kind of like my friend Mitch here has. And that's another great way to essentially, you're free ranging your chickens, you are limiting the areas that they're going, but you know, once a week you're moving them to a fresh spot of ground and they're getting a ton of access to more nutrition there. I prefer doing it this way, but that is not always possible. Of course, I was definitely not possible in San Diego, but in, if you're in an enclosed coop, what you can do is bring in a ton of nutrition for them. So whether that is veggie scraps from your garden, uh, spent beer grain from a local brewery, uh, or you're fermenting your own feed and fermenting grasses in there. You can ferment up to 30%. You could ferment grasses into their commercial feed. You can add in the, the leaves of uh, banana trees, you know, ginger leaves, if you have sorghum, if you have rice holes, anything that you're growing in your garden, the leftover plants that you've pulled out kale chard, toss it all in there in your enclosed coop and just let your chickens go nuts. Eat what they can. Whatever is left on the ground will turn into compost, will attract bugs that then they can eat the bugs. So there's a lot of ways to re both reduce cost and increase the nutrition of your eggs. And if you're interested in going a lot deeper into chicken raising, both these beginner and advanced techniques, I've actually created a chicken course all about natural chicken raising where you will learn how to hatch your own eggs, uh, buy from the hatchery, create your own flock. I've also included Korean natural farming methods which are advanced but increase the intestinal length of your chickens allowing them to, to digest and accumulate a lot more nutrients than just the conventionally ways of raising your chicks, how to ferment feed, what kind of supplements should you use, and a whole lot more. And there's also a free community that's a part of this uh, that if you ever need help, I'll be in there to answer your questions or the other people in the group that we can encourage and share what we're working on and what we're doing with our chickens. So that's been a really beneficial for people already taking the course that when they get stuck on something, they can ask and then get that question answered and move right along. You don't have to search out the internet all over the place. Uh, we're there to help you. So check that out. The link is in the description and I hope to see you in the course. So you may have noticed I ditched my automatic feeders and that's because I'm fermenting my feed. I'm taking a little bit more time because I wanna save a little bit of money on my feed and I wanna increase the nutrition of my birds way further. And fermenting is one way to do that. And all you have to do is add one to one feed with water. So I'll fill this bucket up with half feed, which I do non-GMO, organic, corn and soy free, which is really important. That is gonna bring the omega-6 ratios way down. So not as much inflammatory omega-6, keeping the linoleic acid out of your feed is gonna really 
make your eggs way better than anything that you could ever get at the store. And once you've added the water into this, that's all you have to do, but there's a lot more things, and we get into that in my chicken course, but you can add in apple cider vinegar is one that I highly recommend that you do. Um, you can add in some sea salt, kelp, and all sorts of Korean natural farming inputs as well to ferment this faster, better, and have a lot more trace minerals and vitamins in this for your chickens. And then any excess minerals that they might be eating that let's say their body doesn't assimilate, it's gonna come out their back end onto the ground. So not only am I getting just the macronutrients of their manure out here, but because I'm feeding extra supplement trace minerals, some of that is coming out the back end and now I'm remineralizing this whole area or where my trees are. And that is another huge benefit that a lot of people don't talk about with animals when you feed them extra trace minerals. And this is another way to remineralize ground. The other benefit is that without doing the candy canes, I can now feed them anywhere on my property. So wherever I want them to do work. So if I'm during the season when the grass is growing really fast and I don't wanna to have to come and weed whack or cut the grass around my blueberries or my trees, I can feed my chickens grain right around the base of my trees and they will scratch enough to remove the grass, fertilize there for me, and then they get fed. Recently, I cleaned out my barn where I had all the sheep when it was really cold, they were pooping everywhere. I took out a lot of that sheep bedding, made compost with it, but then I threw my chickens in there, I threw feed around in there, and let them pick through everything, pick through the sheep poop, eat parasites, and just do a, a little bit of a cleanup for me, mix the manure with the straw to help it break down in the barn. So I want you to think of your chickens as a tool that will save you time and labor, that will clean up areas for you, and put a lot more nutrition back into the animal that will then end up in your food that you will enjoy.